Welcome to Friday Tea Time. It's the inevitable I've changed positions, so I adjust my audio. Oh, Auntie Shepard is delaying watching the new episode of The Mandalorian for me. That's a, that's a true honor because I watched the new episode of The Mandalorian when it came out at midnight last night. So, I'm prepared. I'm going to get my mouse off screen here now that everything is open. So, Twitter has spoken. And I have this teapot here. And we are going to cover it in snakes. Uh, full disclosure, basically what I did was offer you things I already had to do this week anyway. So, sculpt birds to finish mugs, sculpt snake candles, finish this teapot. Those were your options because they needed to be done before they all dried out. So, basic, small, sort of single two-person teapot. I uh, threw it a couple of weeks ago, put it together at the beginning of this week, trimmed and added all of its bits. Um, it has the kind of lid that drops down into the interior to hold it into place when you pour. So it's got a deep lid so that when you tip it, the lid catches on the inside and doesn't fall off when you're pouring tea. It doesn't have a handle because I figured, eh, the snake will be the handle. And that's what we're going to decorate today. I've got some snake sketches. Get my camera to focus on them. So far, so good. Um, got some, some of my original snake reference, which is some more sketches, but done carefully on the computer. And some photos I took of a Greek snake bracelet in a museum, because I liked sort of how they rendered elements of the texture and the curly shape. And uh, and here we go, snakes and I guess quail is what we're shouting today. So I have I have diagrams for reference. I have a teapot. I'm gonna clip my mic on now, lest I put stuff on it. Oh, I love Bob Ross. Bob Ross is wonderful to watch. I aspire to be as as calming and charming as Bob Ross <laughs> to watch make art. Um, and I am sorry you're already lagging, Auntie Ship. Hopefully it will solve itself. All right, just bending over here to grab the bag of clay. Oh, tiny bits of dry clay everywhere. The exciting sound of crinkling plastic because here's my leftover white clay already wedged and prepared for this moment but it's a little bit damp um, I think it's probably drier on the inside let's just grab a piece off and see yeah it's a little bit better on the inside I tried to to blend it all together to get it a uniform middle dampness, but what can you do? It's, it's, I've, I've, yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful, perfect ball and now I've ruined it here. I'll tell you what, it'll be like a, like a dome. <laughs> While we, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking there's obviously a snake wrapped around the spout. There's obviously a snake wrapped around up here. Um, I actually, I have a, I have a quail drawing across the room that I made with leftover clay yesterday. Quail just end up being what I make with leftover clay. Nothing is happening and my camera refuses to focus on like the actual, there, o orb and quail orb quail. Um, 
I hope, I hope that, yeah, I hope the plastic bag was, was more ASMR, less horrifying. Um, I don't know. I don't know what quality of sound that was offering. All right, snake photos are kind of going to move slightly out of the way here. Because now we roll some snakes. Quorb. Quorb isn't as fun to say as quail or orb somehow. All hail the quorb. Um, so I, I see I see chat's already uh, already in fine form today. So a lot of un the unfortunate thing about choosing to do snakes is that uh, this is what's gonna happen for a significant portion of this of this creation adventure is uh, this is the this is handle snake by the way in case you're curious. Um, and I'm doing a bad job of rolling a coil. If you don't roll a coil carefully, I think I talked about it when I was making octopus tentacles. If you don't roll it carefully, it goes kind of ovaloid. And, and sometimes I'm just really good at it, and sometimes I completely fail. And I don't really understand the difference. It's just sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I don't. So, snakes on a teapot. Making, making some snake coils. So, here's the question, chat. Everyone, everyone likes to say quail. But if I put a quail on the top of the teapot, is it not just going to look like it's about to be eaten by snakes? Like, I'm just asking because it, it feels it feels like feels like I will be putting a quail in, in, in what appears to be imminent danger, and that might sort of spoil the cheerful effect of the uh, of the quail in general. Just a thought to be concerned with. Like, perhaps, perhaps quail happens after the fact. Perhaps quail does not go on the teapot. Yeah, like, I think it's going to look like a quail being overcome by a swarm of snakes. And I don't really... <laughs> I don't really... I don't really like it. Oh no, Auntie Shepherd, no video. I'm sorry. There's definitely video. I see it. And my audio seems to be quite loud today. I'm gonna tweak it down a little bit and you can yell at me guys if it's weird. But just I don't know, my tail end is getting a little bit weird and flat. Let's see if we can fix it. I think we'll just pinch it off. Squidge it back into the orb. Yep. Okay, we just won't touch that bit for now. I think I think the uh, the failure or success of the of the coil rolling may be a factor of patience. <laughs> Heaven help us. Okay, we want a pretty thick, you know, we want a, a thick handle. That's a, getting, like, we can kind of make it thinner on this end, I think. But we want the handle of a teapot to be pretty, pretty heft. So that it feels like it can support the weight of the teapot. Even though really a pretty thin handle in terms of weight should be fine. Visual weight also matters. So yeah, that that's like a good a good handle width. Now I'm going to kind of go for a longer a longer snack because I want it to wrap around the, this sort of 
nicely indented top um, and kind of form a loop and then it'll be like um, like the snake resting around the top and looping around the side. So I keep adding to the to the snake length here. Okay, this is a very large it's a very large snake. I think I think we're I think we're pretty much there. I'm just gonna do a quick test. Yeah. That's pretty good. Even him out just a little bit. The places where he's gotten a little bit lumpy. We don't want a lumpy snake. And then pinch off and do a snake face. Snake face. Let's see if I can make sure that I do snake face on camera here. Some water, do some shaping. So they have a, a, a surprisingly short nose, do snakes, and a flat little, and then a long kind of face that comes back to the neck kind of here. And you want to make sure that the neck has some pronounced feel to it. All right, see so, you now here's here's the intrinsic difficulty in the snakes. This coil is now drying out. And the longer I fiddle with this end, the harder it's going to be to bend the coil. It's uh it's a generic it's going to be a generic snake. Um because I, I feel like that's sort of the and I want I want it to not interfere with the lid, so good. Just gonna keep it bent into its shape. Um well I need I need to get the basic shape of the face and to do that I need to have a fairly fairly mobile a fairly mobile snick okay get some there's what I was missing the little divot that's better that feels pretty pretty good As a snake, a snake head. Get some smoothing here. Even him out from above. Make sure from both sides. Some little snake cheeks there. Okay. So something like that. Yeah. And then he'll come. I'm going to recenter. There we go. Kind of a straight line to the handle. That straight-ish. I don't want it to be too straight because it is a, a snake. An organic shape. There we go. Okay. So, now. Tis time. Tis time to do some snake attaching.
as I bump the light with my head. So just digging into the scoring the pot where the snake will attach. And we can, if it doesn't have to be super exact, I can clean that up later. smooth it off if it's created a mess anywhere but the important thing is that we want it to create a really good really tight bond with the teapot or it'll start to crack off when it dries that would be bad and then we score the bottom of the snake a little although it's pretty wet so we don't have to do a lot of scoring because we're kind of doing a pretty damp clay to leather hard clay. So, and you can see it already starting to crack there. So let's get, let's get things squidged on. I'm pressing it down onto the score lines, which will make it a little bit less perfectly round, which is fine because that's actually kind of more in keeping with a snake shape anyway. They're not perfectly round in their bodies. Now we're gonna wet my fingers, smooth, smooth the snake, where he's attached help help deal with any with any lumps any oddness that I did when I was sticking him on and there's the start now I want his head to kind of peek up a little and I want it to be nice and firmly attached to his little body here so that they support each other because they need to hold up as a handle. All right, it's time for, uh-oh, my scissors are far away. It's time for me to use a knife off screen. Nobody watch. Okay. Yay. <clears throat> it was perfectly safe. Everyone. Don't don't try stabbing paper towel rolls with knives at home alone, kids. Just needed this paper towel roll to create my nice round handle shape and support it while I get his tail attached at the bottom. <laughs> oh no, Necro Buffalo honestly would not be the worst idea I've had with paper towels. I mean, paper towels are, are for cleaning mostly. I feel like that was a particularly loud swallow of tea. I apologize. I'm thirsty. All right, how are we gonna, I'm just gonna crouch in front of my desk here. How are we, let's see, that kind of goes, yeah, like right there. Right. And we'll just tack it down. Oops. Just tack it down right there while I think about where else the tail goes. So, hmm, around, hmm, 
I mean, that kind of, uh, I want it to kind of be a jaunty loop though. Maybe, maybe back up. And then. And then around. Oh, that's nice. What do we think, chat? I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up and show you. Like that. Just a nice, nice tail curl. So, how do I think? Notice some, some unevenness here. There we go. So that's a more 3D view of how it's going because I recognize that overhead camera sculpting isn't necessarily the best. Um, but it is the most convenient. Now, now, all of that lovely coiled tail is completely unattached. So I've got to score it and then figure out where I was putting it. So it was just going to kind of liberally score the, the pot and we'll just clean it up later. Because I feel like I'm not going to get it exact. I feel like I'm just going to just going to create problems unless I make a lot of squidgy lines. Okay. Good. Yes. Just get that curve in nicely. Squish it all down. Pat to pat. Pat the snake into place because if this doesn't attach firmly, again, it will start to lift up as it dries. And you don't want your snake to detach. Good. So, snake. Now, let's perform some cleanup here. Grab somewhere I have a tiny brush. Where did my tiny brush go? There it is. Grab some, some tools and start off camera and start cleaning up the edges here. I could do more cleanup later. Um, I won't spend too long on this bit, but it also helps me make sure that it's like really well on and well sealed. so that I don't have to worry about it coming up when I move on to the next bit. Because I'm going to have to handle this quite a bit because we're adding more snakes. So I need to make sure that it's... Uh, there's no good angle to make this work with this paper towel roll here. I'm just going to have to guess what I'm doing. <laughs> there we go. And up under here, up under his chin. And around the sides. Just checking the bond and getting the damp clay kind of to fill that little edge and smooth it out. And 
making it nice and tidy. Smoothing up some snake damage from where I aggressively stabbed it with the little scoring tool. And there we go. Oh, let's tidy up the top of this teapot some here. Keep that looking nice. Get that in there. Good. Okay. Now, we're going to leave that. There'll be more detail to add, obviously, but not when he's this damp because I'm going to be handling him, squidging him around. Let's see. Well, so let's just make sure. Yeah, so that's. That's where we are now. Yeah, look, paper towel and toilet rolls are the most useful pottery things that no one will tell you about. They're 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 a perfect like support shape for handles for for like you know just holding things up without creating a hard edge. I've just noticed. I didn't finish off the inside of my lid very well, so I'm just just doing that now. Tidy that up a little bit. It's fine because I'm thinking then we put a snake on the lid, little a little snake on the lid. Oh yeah, I have I have you know piles of of tubes, um, those, uh, those like advertisement flyers they send you just in stacks all around this desk. Um, oh, another really helpful pottery thing, a little bit more crinkly noise here is, uh, is dry cleaning bags because they're nice and soft and light. So they're less likely to put weight and pressure on delicate sculpture pieces as I smack my light. Um, so it's super, super useful to have that stuff around. So I don't throw it out anymore. All right. Ruin this sphere some more. I don't know how much, how much snake weed. I, I feel like I want a really good coil though for the lid. So I think I want a fair amount of Ah, uh, wrapping paper tube swords are a Christmas tradition. As treasured, as treasured as any. All right. Get this nice and smooth. So we roll it out. Sorry, camera lag. <laughs> Actually, just wet my hands a little bit to start this off because because what happens <laughs> is your hands get covered in clay and then when you're doing stuff that doesn't involve using your whole hands the clay at the bottom of your hands dries out and gets all crackly and then it makes it weird and hard to use new clay because you're getting like crackly bits of dried out clay into it <laughs> and that's no fun I haven't really been watching, but I feel like my camera may be keeping up slightly better today. It doesn't like the rolling, but I mean, I can't blame it for that. That's that's never going to be a thing that a, a poor little web camera is great at capturing. Rolling a snake. Rolling a snake. Don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> We're gonna. Oh, I'll show you a cheat. 
we're going to use this, which is essentially this sort of tool you make like fishnet stockings and like old hat mesh out of. That will create the scale pattern. Showing you all my dark secrets. Letting you in on all the secret tips and tricks. I also have a wooden stamp that I made. Oh yes, secrets. I apologize if that came through the audio awfully, but it was fun to say. Yeah, I've also, I've made a little Cut myself a little balsa wood stamp for bird feathers. Just how the quail get their feathers. I feel like I showed you that when I made quail the other time. Let you in on the quail secret. Let's how. Oh, need more snake. <laughs> Gotta. Got to coil more snake around the top. Yes, I was I was relieved to discover there is a, a, a solid snake emoji. So that so that I could communicate my ideas in picture form, which is something that I I Santa did, and I was like, oh, that's that's obvious. That solves all of my Twitter poll woes. Um, cause I, I don't describe things that I want to do on this stream well, briefly. <laughs> I feel like it, it requires, um, a fair amount of, fair amount of words to explain <laughs> the thing that I'm doing. Yeah, well, cause that, that my frustration has always with the Twitter polls has always been um, how to communicate things succinctly enough to work in a Twitter poll. <laughs> because I mean, so I could just say illustrate a thing, or you know, it it's just the ideas end up requiring explanation. <laughs> like you have to write out the whole thing if your idea is sheep guana naturalism illustration. You can't just be like sheep guana drawing. It doesn't clearly communicate what you're doing. And you can't say natural history illustration because you have to specify sheep guana because it's a made up animal and uh, and people won't take it for granted that you're doing it with an invented animal. It's, it's just it's important to have all of the information contained in there. Okay. I'm starting to remember how I how I formed these little faces before. I had a sort of a system worked out and I've since lost it. But it's uh it was a process of where to put the little the little dents to make the best effect. We're getting it back. Yes, good. Good snake face. Yeah, the, well, so there, here's a chat. It's a great time to, to talk about the fact that there's no sheep guana emoji. I'll tell you why there's no sheep guana emoji in Twitch anyway, is because in order to have my own emoji, I have to have 50 followers. So if you're not following me on Twitch, even if you don't care, turn off the emails and follow me because if 50 people follow me, I can give you custom emoji and you know I will and you know there'll be quail and you know there'll be sheep guana. You can count on me to give you the emoji that you want of quail and sheep guana. 
So, if you want special Twitch emoji for this chat, follow me on Twitch. Yeah, goals. That's the goal. I don't... It, I assume it gives me other things. I think it lets me have people pay to subscribe. I don't care. All I care about is the ability to do emoji for my channel. That's it. I want custom emoji. There's no, there's no ulterior motive. There's no hidden goals. I literally, I just wanna, I just wanna give you guys emoji. That's that's all I want out of it. So let's see. Snake. This snake has a very large head and a very small body. I have concerns. Hoping, hoping that it'll work out because I don't want to redo the head because I kind of like it. Where, okay, he's gonna, I think, sit on top. And then be like, essentially a, a tower of snake here. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Now I just have to attach, I don't know, his head still feels too big, you guys. I don't know. It feels too big. I don't, I can't deal. Sorry, I have to fix it. <laughs> I know it was such a it was such a good snake head, but needs must. In service of the overall effect. Sacrifices must be made. It's fine. It'll be a good it'll be a good little face again. In just a minute. Yeah, that that's a more appropriate size for his tiny snake body. It still feels a little big, actually. I'm gonna decide how annoyed I am about that. But I need to get him on there <laughs> before he cracks. So just eh, just all of it. It's fine. I'll fix it later. <laughs> Yes, the T protector. I want it to still, I need to make sure that you can still take hold of the lid and lift it, because you know, you want to still be able to use it as a lid. But I want him to be kind of upright and, and alert and guarding the, the teapot. Okay. Get some scoring on the inside here. And yeah, see that this, this is the, this tearing texture is, is the problem that we get when we work too long with a coil. I will smooth it in a moment, but let's get him on top. Looking upwards a little bit, nice curl, tight wrapping around the teapot lid and a snake coil, protective snake coil and a tail. 
goes up. And squidge it all down some. Okay. Get that on there. Good. The snake coil song. And I stabbed him with my fingernail, as as tends to happen. Okay. Now we've got to deal with this horrifying, horrifying cracking that has occurred. Let's see if we can gently ease snake coil back into. into a smooth surface. With a nice water massage. Hmm, okay, this is gonna require some, some additional effort. Okay, it's looking better. Looking a little bit less crackly. See if we can't tidy up in general. Oh, camera, please focus on, please focus on my snake. Please focus on what I'm doing. It's Friday tea time at the work table. Sarah yells at her camera to focus. And it doesn't want to. Although I'm not sure there's a solution, frankly. I think that possibly there's just too much going on at too many different lengths from the camera. I feel like if I had the ability to maybe lock the focus, but even then I feel like stuff would just drift out of focus eventually. So, so I've given up, chat. I've <laughs> given up on, on making the camera be better than it is. I have no, I have no more camera ambition. This one shows you a picture. It's mostly in focus. It's certainly okay quality. And that's, and that's what I've decided I'm asking from the camera. Certainly a picture of okay quality. That's, that's my high, my high flying goal. High flying goal of that is certainly an image that I can see. Well, also, I didn't have to re add it to OBS this time, so you know, prog progress, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna refine that head shape a little bit again. Ah, first I'm gonna gonna wash my hands a little. And dry them on the world's worst towel. Oh look what I've done to this poor once very pleasant tea towel. Stained forever. Okay. So snake nose. Snake eye ridge here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Flatten his little nose a little bit. Yes. 
good, good snake face. Squish all of this down a little bit while it's still damp, now that my hand is clean. Still going to have to probably deal with that cracked bit, maybe add a little bit of clay. Maybe add a little bit of clay. Maybe we'll add a little bit of clay now while it's wet. Right along here. Ooh, look at that, we're using a tool instead of my fingers. What madness is that? Still wiping it on the back of my hand. So hasn't changed that much. There we go. Kind of smooth that shape off again. That's better. Get rid of that divot there so that it feels a little bit a little bit smoother, a little bit more snake shaped. Oops. Got to make sure that it's smooth down in there. There we go. It is there. Okay. And I can still grab it by the edges, so lid can face whatever direction you want. Lid. So we have a lid snake and a handle snake. Let's thusly. Ah, his head still feels too... whatever, it's fine. He's got a tiny body. I don't know what happened. Curled up, I guess he just needed more. I could add more coils later. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, that's where we are now. Now I think that we need one that kind of comes around this side and ends up wrapped around the teapot, sitting right on top there, so that, you know, he's, uh, uh, still debating how much I'm annoyed by this and how much more snake I want. I might, I might have to deal with this. Might have to deal with it. We'll leave it for now. Leave it for now, but I predict I predict I'll get annoyed and want to fix it. Because he feels out of balance, but I don't want his head to be any smaller or I feel like it'll be like weirdly small next to the other one. Ugh. Ah, scale. Okay. Let's Let's just see how far this bit will take us. Oh, I think plenty far enough for I think plenty far enough for spout snake. Got the end there. Spout snake needs to be pretty, pretty dainty actually, because the spout's not that long. And uh, I don't want to. I want to make it 
hard to pour tea around the snake. Because that would defeat the purpose of a teapot. So. Got that a little bit narrow. Da, da, da. Okay. I'm going to try and be appropriately conservative here with snake scale. Yes, okay. I feel okay about, about this, I think. A little bit more off. Am I off? I'm off camera. Sorry. I feel like I've actually bumped the camera at some point. And it's moved. Okay. Just, just deal with that as it happens. Yeah. See that, that just, that feels more like the right, mm. ah, snakes. Um, I can't deal. I'm gonna have to gonna have to add on to this guy. We'll just leave that there for a minute while I while I finish this little dude. Get that. And then you can just set right there. Oh no, I'm off screen. End of my teapot is completely off camera. Da da, like sitting right on top there. Just overlapping the spout a little bit, but not, but not blocking it because we don't want, we don't want to make it hard to pour tea after all. It is a teapot. There. So. Attach him right there. And then he goes down and under. Turn the teapot. All right, serpent, serpent tea spout. Wrap it under. Yes, and then up to here, I think like most of the way around. Because we want to have the sinewy, coily, serpenty feel. So he can go up there. And then, and then where? And then where will he go? Maybe back around? That feels pretty good. Feels, feels pretty good. Maybe a little bit more curve there, but kind of bringing it back around. Squishing it down.
curvy snakes. Well, see the T is it's it's at a little angle, so it should it should it should just keep him nice and warm and not burn his little snake nose. Because I don't I don't want snake snake nose to burn either. Um, and I don't want him to to be in the way of the tea. Because you can't move him. If anyone's curious, I'm I'm literally kneeling on the floor right now <laughs> to to see the side of this teapot because I don't really want to lift it up. Because I don't want to try and do this one-handed. So. Okay. Yes. A snowana. A snake sauna. Okay, I'm going to do something horrible and drastic. I apologize to everyone for what's about to happen. I'm gonna just gently set him over here because I've I've amputated. I've amputated a part of the snake because I can't handle it. It feels too small. I'm adding I'm adding some snake. And to do that, I'm afraid I had to, to commit an atrocity. I'm sorry. I promise everything will be fine. He'll he'll be fine. Don't worry. I will make I'll make sure that everything gets rebuilt just fine. Yes. Good. Good, good, good. So. There we go. Just gonna give us a sharp clean edge on each end. It's a uh, It's fine. Cyborg, cyborg snake is fine. He'll he'll survive. He'll survive and 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 be be a, a good a good strong whole snake again. Oops. I say, oops, I say, as I'm attempting to reassure you that everything is fine. Always a great sign. There we go. Now. Now to solve this snake issue. Let's get some water on here. Get this damp again. We're gonna fix this snake. It's gonna be longer, better. And his head isn't gonna look enormous on his tiny snake body. <laughs> That's the goal. And I think we can do it. We may also have to make his head smaller. <laughs> Yeah, we may also have to make his head smaller, things you don't want to have to hear during surgery. I had a dentist say oops once. It was not great. We 
was a uh, it's not a great feeling. Okay, that's just get us more snake here. More snake for our for our pot. Just nicely curled onto it. And his head still feels too big. <laughs> I can't win. I can't win, but I feel better about the general form. Feels less weirdly short. Feels better, but not but not yet correct. We'll get there. I don't know why the other two were easy and this one is incredibly difficult to work out. That's just, it's just seems to be how it is. Okay, okay. I'm sorry for your nose. It's fine. Again, everything will be fine. I promise. Just gotta, just gotta fix the scale. Okay. Feeling better about the general size now. See, that's just, it's a better match, guys. I'm sorry, I know that was traumatic. I'm sorry we all had to go through that. But, but now it feels more in scale with his little snake body. Now it just, it feels, feels more, more comfortable. It's, see, it just, it feels, feels less top heavy. We've made his life better. I know it doesn't seem like it, but we have. We've we've improved his his expectations. And yeah, now now he looks now he looks like he's he's more snake, he's more solidly curled. I apologize for the sound of my neighbors bringing the trash bins in. But not that much because I think they're also bringing my trash bins in. So I can't really complain. <laughs> Let's clean up. I promise we will stop messing with the lid in a second. See? We'll just just put him on. There, he's he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop, I'll stop harassing Lid Snake and start, start harassing uh, Spout Snake again. Gotta tidy up his join. Make sure that he is all tidy and clean. Yeah, it, it. I just the coil wasn't enough. It it needed to fill out the whole because I made a kind of a, a a silly tall gnome hat looking lid, with the idea that I was going to wrap a, something around it. It was going to be flowers or something like. Yeah, guys, I I have to tell you originally, the plan for this teapot was that I was going to put flowers on it. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I thought that. I don't know. 
don't know what madness made me believe that that's what the internet would want. Because once once I decided to let you guys choose, it was definitely going to be snakes or quails. <laughs> wasn't maybe sheep guana. It definitely was never going to be flowers. I don't. Maybe if it was the only option I gave you, it was like we're going to sculpt flowers on a teapot. But I think you'd still shout quail. I don't think I think there'd still be a quail in the flowers. I don't think I could get away with it. I'm not complaining. I'm uh I'm grateful that, that that I have a chat that's willing to go along with let's cover a teapot in snakes as like a solid majority. I uh I appreciate that. I'm just admitting that when I threw this pot, the first the first version, the first plan, I feel like I'm just not this camera's not doing it. There we go. Maybe that maybe maybe there. Maybe maybe here. Um anyway. I I my first plan was flowers. I have a, an, a sort of an urn jar thing that I made with some... Oh, now the light is causing problems. I'm just going to have to hold this farther away, aren't I? Um, I, have a, I have a jar with some poppies on it that I made for myself um, that I really like. So I thought maybe I'd try more 3D flowers. And, uh, and then... It got to partway through this week and I had two thrown mugs and a teapot that I just really had to finish. So, so I, I left it up to you. I could, I could still add flowers, I suppose. I suppose I could, I could still just throw in flowers around the snakes. Um. We shall see. Although the thing is, the thing is, chat, that uh, the one snake mug that sold right away was the one that was uh, like black, red, and gold. The one that was like, uh, I think the, I think the the name of the glaze was ancient jasper. You know, the the sort of dark mottled agate looking snake mug. Like, went home right away. So, I'm not sure that flowers will work. Um, with, with the kind of darkness that the internet appears to demand of snakes. I get why that one sold first. Because good omens is a thing. And, uh, and the colors of Crawley are black and red, basically. But one can't put flowers in a teapot and then, well, I guess one can, in fact, put flowers in a teapot and then glaze them, <laughs> glaze them in uh, the color of ancient demonic stone. Uh, one can do whatever one wants. But I think it would look a little silly, personally. I realize I'm sculpting entirely off camera. I apologize. <laughs> Move that. I was just touching up his little nose, and I realized that I was just off camera. There we go. So, now, where else are we going to put snakes, friends? It's only 4.30. That said, it's 4.30 and my tea is cold. So, I think what we might do is add one more snake. Just... Put the lid back on. Um, add one more snake and then and then take a little break to let them set up some. The bottom hmm. Hmm. Let's take the lid off to, to examine this. The bottom is is pretty pretty dainty. 
Um, there's not a lot of height to it. Uh, I a, a snake inside could be fun, but also it will make it just. And this is this is just from a practical person who drinks a lot of tea. It will make it impossible to clean. <laughs> Like, just truly impossible. Um, it's already just barely big enough to get your hand inside. Um, and, like, I obviously choose form over function to a certain extent here, but I don't know that I want to go so far as to, as to harm function noticeably with my form. Um, So, oh, that's fair. Maybe we just need to come up with the right flower. I'm sorry, pineapple, what? Pineapple is a fruit. Does pineapple have a flower? Is there such a thing as a pineapple flower? What does a pineapple flower look like? Just fiddling with snakes some more here. Um, okay, so, hmm, so I curled front snake this way, curled back snake this way, so that we would fill, let's see, let's, this, this bit here is the bit that feels the most empty. I wonder, okay, I'm going to do an experiment. And if it fails, I'll just have an extra snake. <laughs> Let's see. I feel like that's about the amount I've been using for a snake, maybe. Why is pineapple, Hannah, why is pineapple the first thing that comes to mind as far as this chat goes? I want to I wanna understand why pineapple, pineapple, pineapple. pineapple is the first thing that you think of when we ask you for a flower for this chat. I, I'm curious what, what's going on there. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I don't know. We, we've not really talked about flowers in, uh, in this, in this stream ever, have we? I'm, um, I'm not sure it's a topic that's come up, which is interesting because I actually quite like plants. I have quite a lot of them, including a carnivorous plant bog and some rare fuchsia. And look, hey, hey, the carnivorous Venus flytraps flower, as do um, as do sundew and uh, and pitcher plants. So there. Oh, but a Venus flytrap would be fun. I do like Venus flytraps. Hmm. Carnivorous plants mixed in. It's it's got potential. Hmm. But the problem with flytraps is they've got fiddly little tiny tines would have to be like against something or sort of suggested and drawn on like the oxalotl uh, gills because they'd be too fragile to just have out. I mean, not in a sculpture necessarily, but certainly in a usable item, they'd be too fragile to have just sticking out in all directions. Although I actually have quite a lot of trouble keeping Venus flytraps alive in my bog because they are very susceptible to aphids. Um, and when aphids bite them, they, they curl up and grow stunted and don't produce a proper trap. Then they don't get to eat flies and enough aphids can just kill a whole plant and you can't spray them with most pesticides because 
they need extremely nutrient poor soil and a significant amount of like insecticidal soaps and things add things like potassium to the soil which harms the plant just like the aphids would have so it's a uh, it's a problem things you didn't know about bog pest control from your friendly neighborhood bog witch Just uh, some fun gardening facts. I mean, flea bitten teas are vegan ish, I assume. There's probably, but I mean, look, here's the thing if you're eating vegetables, some insects are sneaking in there. It's just, that's just life. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whether you want them to or not, eventually you're going to just accidentally eat an aphid. And, uh, do you have to make your peace with that? Well, the rest of chat's being very quiet, so Hannah and I are just going to talk about, about whatever we want. Uh, I hope that's okay. Let's talk about eating bugs. And my garden. That's where that's where today's today's chat has gone. Sarah complains about aphids. It's uh it's no it's it's fine, Hannah. Other other people could could have interrupted us, but here we are. Here we are talking about what it will always end up being about, which is tea in one way or another, which is on brand. And I'm still making a snake, so those people who are watching and not listening are safe. <laughs> safe from our from our weird insect ramblings. No, no, our craft, you don't have to be sorry. You just have to you just have to put up with whatever we want to talk about. Uh, it's fine. Especially if you don't mind that we're now talking about the fact that vegans will inevitably eat bugs. It's, uh, as long as as long as that's okay with you, then you're 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 losing nothing. Okay. Snake Mm hmm. Hmm. It's just crawling up the side. <laughs> Salt and vinegar crickets claims necro buffalo are pretty okay, which uh, which is not the strongest <laughs> sort of hype I've ever heard for a, a food stuff, but but fair enough. Now I'm just going to guess where I want this to go. I kind of want it to go up and around. And then, and then I'm going to, uh-oh, I've created a problem for myself where I want to kind of overlap this handle. Okay, it may be stiff enough to deal. I'll oh, just use paper. Because I want it to kind of go around here. And, like, kind of create... You know... I, I may have just... I may just be, like, way overestimating the length that I have to work with here. We'll see what happens when I actually go to attach it. Or I could be underestimating it. Crickets are pretty tasteless, to be honest. That's that's kind of, yeah, I mean, 
That seems kind of predictable. <laughs> oh, R Craft, are you kidding? This is the kind of content I watch you for. Thank you. Um, I'm pleased. I'm pleased to know that that my my brand of content remains remains acceptable. Top quality, top quality insect eating content right here on Friday tea time. Yeah, that's that's fair, Necro Buffalo. It, it's possible that 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 one could produce more delicious crickets in a shall we say chefier setting, a a more a more restaurant, less snack box setting. But uh, but I mean, crickets are a very sustainable snack food, so. Just a uh, thing to consider. Oh, I need to I need to fix your little nose. You need to be lifted slightly off that teapot there. Okay. So, oh, a little bit too aggressive a curve right there. Fix you later. Ooh, look at that. I'm almost correct in length. Almost made the right choice about snake length. Curl. A curl or no let's go let's let's hug it let's go down and around yes let's let's continue the the climbing visual down and around good and then nudge this down some. Better curve. Yes. Get that. Curve dealt with. Wanna Here we go. Taking a bit more care with, there we go, snick. Snick attached to side. I did, I booped, I booped the snake nose. I wanted him to, to look up slightly. So, this is, this is texture snake. But now we've got him. Now this side feels a little bit empty. So we'll see. First, let's uh, let's get side snake really good and attached. Deal with getting him smoothed on. Okay, so. We have side snake, spout snake, Handle snake. Handle. I'm gonna widen handle here a little bit because you really do need to hold a teapot handle. I'm 
Just make sure that stays lifted up. And we have lid snake. We have pretty much covered the teapot in snakes. I don't know that there's space for another snake here, and I think I'm just going to leave it like empty for now. Um, what we might do is perhaps carve some teapot decoration there to make it seem like it's an, underneath the snakes. It's a it's a whole teapot that snakes are actually crawling on, just like a little bit of kind of illusion to make it feel like. I'm just gonna move that knife that I just knocked my finger against. <laughs> um, to make it feel like there are snakes crawling on a teapot instead of instead of just a vessel that has had snakes sculpted onto it. Just add to the illusion a little bit. Because um, I think that would be kind of fun. Just tidying this up some while it's still wet. I know it's not the greatest camera visual, but uh, but to be fair, it's not the most exciting activity anyway. So so it's fine. But I wanna okay lid lid. You need to to be gone for a minute here. So I can reach inside, smoothing the, the chaos that I have caused. Because I don't want it to get too hard to tidy, too firm. Yes, that's better. Okay, teapot, tea lid. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let these set up a little bit. Um, just firm some. I'm gonna gonna fold this and keep giving the uh, the handle here some support. so it doesn't collapse while I'm letting it set. Um, and now I'm gonna make take a short break and make some more tea. Do the thing where I get clay on my computer mouse as I put up the break time sign. Um, and I'll be back in about five minutes. While I'm gone, chat, discuss amongst yourselves whether we should add flowers, what kind of flowers, or if we should score some teapot decoration to pretend that this is a normal teapot snakes have crawled onto. Discuss amongst yourselves. I'll be back shortly.
All right, I am back. Good, good job for following instructions, chat. I see we've had passion flowers and rafflesia mentioned. I have brought my phone. I googled swamp flowers while I was gone and discovered that swamp flowers are largely boring. Um, although there are orchids, which are always lovely. And, uh, and the, uh, the Florida swamp lily is pretty cool. All things considered. But let's see here. Let's... Googling, ref oh. <laughs> oh right, I forgot, Rafflesia, looks like that. But they're enormous, aren't they? I don't know that they'll, uh, I don't know that they'll fit on, on, uh, on a snake, snake mug snake pot tea pot. oh anyway passion 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 flowers might work actually um i mean in a visual <laughs> in, in a thematic sense in a visual sense they're uh let's let's kindly say a problem <laughs> um It's, uh, it's the, uh, let's, uh, how many, okay, I'm going to do an experiment. I have, I have a theory that I can make this happen. Yeah, you should go, you should go buy a pineapple necker buffalo. Now that, now that everyone is, uh, is stuck on pineapple. I do, I do like Rafflesia, but, um, but yeah, I feel like that's, that's, uh, the whole thing. What am I going to roll? I'm going to use this nice unassuming pencil to roll. Oops. Pencil is, uh, sticky apparently. <laughs> Let's be more careful, shall we? Too thin. Lesson learned. Stocks and pineapples rise by 1%. Uh, who knew it was pineapple day? Clean my, my poor unassuming graphite pencil that's done that's done nothing wrong. Um, its main crime is being a graphite pencil that is not soft enough for me to use regularly. I have a rolling pin, it's just too big <laughs> for for this little this little process. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna give you guys some some angry loud noises here. Because it'll be easier. We want it to get pretty thin for for the the strange plan that we've got. I say we, the plan that I have. <laughs> because now I'm trying to make passion flowers um, which you may or may not have actually suggested I just uh, you know I like a challenge and I read up chat passion flowers were mentioned and I thought you know why people like snakes because good omens you know it would be perfect with a a demon snake mug a passion flower Oh no, Hannah. Did you actually just... Hannah googled complicated flowers. 
And that was the result. Well, fair enough. Okay, it's time to break out my favorite tool. The cookie cutter set. There we go. That's a good size. Notice I have one labeled in blue. That is the specific cookie cutter that is used for the base of the bird mugs. That's to remember that, that is the size for bird mugs. My forever very simple reminder. <laughs> oh no, uh, Hannah very rightly points out that she is getting payback for the fact that during her stream on Wednesday she asked what instrument a character should play and I said concertina um, which uh, I would argue is not as complicated as an accordion but is still not uh, well you know it's no tin whistle <laughs> if you know what I mean it's uh It does. It does. It's it's a terrible to draw sort of instrument, and uh, and I'm a bad person for suggesting it. Um, but I did not I did not back off from suggesting it, although I did say that when I left for yoga, you could stop working on it and pretend that I had never said it. Um, so I, I mitigated the pain sl that I had caused slightly, but not really. Not not. It was it was. It was an hour and a half in at that point, <laughs> is all I'm saying. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd gone too far. And this, this is my, uh, this is my deserved, deserved revenge. I'm suffering the consequences of my actions. But that's fair. Well, now I think you're going a little bit far. I mean, I think that they aren't the most complicated thing to draw. They're just one of the worst instruments to draw. Like, I could have said any stringed instrument and all you had to do would, fake, would be fake it, but no. Okay. Phone, phone screen died. There's the passion flower. So it's five petals. Cool. So like this is the center. How do I divide a thing into fifths? Let's go here. Two. Three, four, five. Yeah, okay, that's that's feels basically about the length of that. Okay, doing some geometry on Friday tea time stream. Trying to make five petaled flowers. <laughs> it wasn't a harpsichord. It's true. I didn't give you anything with keys. It was not a harpsichord. Mm, delicious tea. Okay. Let's see if we can make this. Happen. We're going to need to make at least two of them, I think, for this to, to make sense. Um, but maybe I'll just make one, stick it on the side, and call it a day. Add a bud somewhere. Okay, five petals, five petals. Time to bring out the exacto blade. Ah, kit phone. Phone, I need you to, to work with me here.
Okay, and there's sort of a an inner circle of like nope. Too big. Kind of an inner circle shape. That's uh that's like the thing. <laughs> I've lost all of the plant part words. It's it's the the inside of the frill, I don't I don't know, it's not a normal flower. I don't really I don't really know what to call that bit. <clears throat> It's the, the, the fluff, the flower, the flower fluff. My phone really is mad at me today and does not want to stay on. Doesn't like being on camera, I guess. It's fine. I'll keep getting clay on it to turn it back on. Usually I would use my second monitor for reference, but we've moved the whole setup to the desk. A clay work table. There is no second monitor, there's only a laptop perched in a very dangerous and precarious position on top of uh, literally like a cake decorating turnstile. So. So in case you, you weren't concerned for the safety of my laptop this whole time, turns out you should have been. Okay. Gonna, gonna shape these petals some. Because I want them to feel delicate. Delicate and floral. It's it's a it's a, it's not exactly a lazy Susan. Hannah, it's a, it's a, it's a heavy metal spinny stand. Um, I think, I think it's on Amazon as maybe a cake decorating stand or potentially um, misnamed as a pottery wheel, which I assume would make people think that it was electric and it's super not, nor is it weighted enough to spin really like a pottery wheel and so yeah it's it's like an industrial lazy susan like uh like a rosie the riveter lazy susan <laughs> okay Some... right part two Part two, I'm gonna, I've learned my lesson from part one. I'm gonna be a little bit more methodical with my process. Cut out those petals. Of the passion flower that we are putting on a snake teapot because I feel like we've run out of space for snakes, but there's still not enough decoration. In case anyone missed the pre break stream, now you're caught up with the madness that is ensuing now. You understand, for the most part, what has happened. And now, just 
I'm going to tidy these up. One of these, it's not like the others. It's too big. It needs fixing. There we go. Okay. Smooth these out. To match its other, I think, I think outer, inner, upper, what? Okay, the, the inner ones are, are shorter. So yeah, this will be the, the bottom inner one is the plan. With my laptop on the hard-working Susan. Yes. I actually kind of like sculpting flowers. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's organic shapes are kind of, organic shapes that, that aren't really specific kind of relaxing to do. Okay, now, now. Oh, needs to be trimmed. Needs to be trimmed down. Now that I've squidged the petals, they're too wide. I'm tidying them up. So, so chat, let's talk about, let's talk about the future, future streams on Friday tea time. Um, I will be traveling for the holidays to a place where not only will I have no uh, Cintiq for digital art and no work table or clay for sculpting. I will also have rural internet of the sort that Auntie Shepherd deals with. So I will not be streaming for about three weeks. I may attempt to do uh, a game stream in there somewhere. But for the most part, I'm afraid that through the new year, after next week's stream, it's going to be quite quiet here. So I will miss you guys. I will see if I can maybe use my cell phone to stream something, just like sketching or, or do maybe another Stardew Valley Darkest Timeline stream. But uh, for the most part, I suspect that it won't be a good enough upload speed to, uh, to stream for you guys. But, when I get back in January, I'm going to launch some cool new things. Um, besides sort of revamping my website, which is a thing that I should have done long ago, um, I am planning to finally launch a Patreon at the beginning of next year. And that should have some cool new things that you guys will not have seen before. Some options for patron-only content um, and some cool sort of bi-monthly gift merchandise things. 
I'm pretty excited about that involve both prints and uh, and some neat little ceramics doodads. So I will be hard at work on that while I'm not streaming. So at least you have something to look forward to. But don't worry, I will be here next week doing some digital art. I don't know what digital art, but it will be some. Some digital art will happen. Okay, this is the base of a passion flower. This is where its, uh, it's ruffle goes. So we've started a passion flower. It still it looks like a passion flower so far. I've spilled tea on myself. So, you know, things are going according to plan. Get some more clay here. It's time to make the ruffle. Or the, the I don't, the furry, like fluffy, but I don't, I'm going to call it the ruffle is what I'm going to call it. Hi. If you know the appropriate scientific term chat, do tell me. Um, I say no. If you want to Google it, that's fine too. I'm not gonna because my hands are covered in clay and my phone's already uh, clay covered enough for the moment, I think. But this is the tricky bit. We're going to try and have it feel like those fine sort of hairs. Um, but not have it be very like sort of super fragile and problematic on an item like a teapot which requires cleaning and holding and picking up and carrying. It's not fully sculptural, it is, it is a functional piece of pottery. So, so let's see, I feel like maybe, yes. To the midpoint there. So, that's the, uh, that's the outer frill. And this, it's just a stamp, not a cut, it is sort of that inner, that inner circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit thinner and more variable. Pinching it like that. And then I'm going to draw some lines coming out from the center. I say coming out from the center, marginally, marginally coming out from the center. And, uh, I apologize that somewhere in the middle of this whole thing, the lighting probably changed. It uh, it got dark. It was a lovely cloudy day with nice nice recording light coming through the window, and then and then darkness fell. And uh, now we're dealing with just the overhead light. Okay, so the idea here is to kind of cut this up a little bit without actually without actually cutting it. I want it to stay one sort of thin connected piece of clay, but 
Actually, let's use this side. There we go. And then I'm going to soften this middle a little bit. There we go. Aha! Aha! Hmm. We're going to cut some segments out and see if that helps. Or if it's going to cause problems. Again, I recognize that I'm, I'm, I'm making this harder to wash <laughs> as I do this. The more choppy detail I add, the more trouble I'm causing someone later. But we're doing it anyway. It's, it's happened. It's too late to look back. Now we move only forward. Only forward with the passion flower. Um, I. Do not know what to do with the stamen bit. I think it's the, yeah, the stamen is up in the center. I uh, I don't want to make that too tall because I don't want it to break off. But on an actual passion flower, it is quite tall with multi tiers and sticks up, and that kind of is a distinctive looking thing. So that's the next thing to ask ourselves the next hurdle to overcome. We do, I guess, always have the option of not putting this on the teapot also. Um, we always, always have that power. And we need to reserve ourselves a few minutes at the end to, to add snake detail. So we'll see where we get. But for now, pressing onwards. And to sort of mitigate this, we're going to lay the, that bit down against the flower so that it's less likely to break off. So here's, here's where we are so far with our passion flower. How we feel in chat? Do we regret? Do we regret our choices? Do we do we feel like this is, this is coming together? Does it look like a passion flower to you guys? I recognize that you're not an unbiased source since you've seen me making it and know exactly what it's supposed to be. But try and be try and be objective in your. your sort of critique um, also um, my stream on my computer may have frozen so uh, I hope that everyone else has I still have video so hope that everyone else still has everything working I will take a moment to fiddle. It appears just there we go. Cool. Everything is fine. Everything is working. Now there's clay on my keyboard was bound to happen eventually. It had done that thing where I was clearly broadcasting with OBS, but my 
Twitch screen had just stopped. And, uh, and I wanted to make sure that that was me only and not everyone in the world. I say everyone in the world, you know, just those of you who are, who are here. All right, time to figure out that middle tower. Pull that up, that, that middle tower. It's, uh, it's not really wanting to focus on my phone, which is fair. But they're, they're, the, the, the tower of, of various, various passion flower. Parts. We're going to kind of cheat it. Good. Okay. Still going for everyone. Although, uh, it, took a long time for for it to come back up. So I think it's fine. I think it was just me. So let's get some uh, let's see how are we can do this. I think maybe we'll do more cutouts. I think that may may be the best concept here will be to to make another disc and cut out stackable layers. Slightly thicker disc this time. And starting to dry out a little bit. Let's try and Fix that. Okay. So it's like a center and then three. Like that kind of shape. Cool. And then it kind of a shape like that. And that is the top of the middle bit. Get that in there. So that'll be sort of that, that center bit. Then it's got tiers of sort of T-shaped pollen. There's scientific words for all of these things that I should know. Some days I do know. Today, I'm disappointing plant people by, by forgetting there are stamens and there are I want to say pistons, which maybe isn't uh, it's just going to be that kind of day. Anyway. We got some of some of those shapes going. So just cut out some sort of some T shapes. I let that one get kind of out of hand. See if we can see if we can squidge it back into shape. Fix it in post, as they say. Pist, pist, pistils? Pist, 
stamens and pistils. That sounds like a title of a, of a worrying western. Okay, one more. I think there's probably more than one more on the uh, actual flower, but but we're sort of uh, stylizing here a little. I would say, trying to to get the essence. I mean, you know, plants plants have have lady and male parts. That might be a little bit too, okay, too long. Gotta gotta make this inner bit smaller. Get them stuck together. Da, da, da. Stick things down. There, and there, and there. And then middle. Ah, uh, Sex Pistols. Yes. They are for gathering or dispensing pollen. Okay. Okay. This is my take on a passion flower. I'm going to add some 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 detail-ish bits here, just just for fun. Gonna shape the petals a little bit. Oh, but I'm not wholly convinced. It would it would make a rad pirate flag emblem. Um, I'm not wholly convinced it will work on this teapot, however. Um, I will I will allow allow chat to to present opinions on that. Um, don't worry, I'm not just going to crush it and throw it away if it doesn't go on the teapot. Um, but I'm not wholly convinced it belongs on Snake Teapot. It would, however, make an excellent pirate flag. And if I wasn't already definitely sailing under the under the flag of the uh, of the carnivorous pitcher plant, I would. I would be okay sailing under the flag of of the passion flower pirates. So there we go. Added some fiddly bits. Gonna find nope. Maybe I'm gonna find my little rubber. There it is. My little rubber. Sculpty tool that you have seen before. And uh, just add some detailed squidging. 
don't you know? Make sure it all, it all, there we go. So, now we have a passion flower. <laughs> that is a thing that has happened. And, uh, and a snake mug. Not a snake mug. I don't know why I keep calling it a mug. It's definitely a teapot. It's much too large for a mug. We have a snake teapot and a passion flower. I'm just going to gently set the passion flower there for a moment. Hang on, I'll move it so it's still on screen. There, still on screen. But placed where I won't squish it. Because uh, cause I feel it's time to return. Yeah, we've, we've, we're a lot, a lot firmer now. Our snakes have uh, have started to solidify. <laughs> it's time to start adding some snake detail. As a reminder, I'm just gonna. No, you know what? We'll leave the lid on for a minute because Let's see if I can juggle this. Sorry, camera. Um, yeah. So this is where the passion flower would go. And then I'd maybe have like a leaf or a vine. I mean, it, it feels like too much <laughs> is what I'm saying. Feels like, feels like it maybe goes a little far. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that our craft. That's, that's kind of how I feel. I feel like I feel like the passion flower deserves its own thing, and you know what I have. Um, I was gonna put snakes on them, but oh, let's see if I can do this without just knocking the camera over. Back here in the back of the the secret bench, I have I have some mugs. I have some mugs that I was gonna put snakes on. A few. Ooh, this is a nice. This is a nice fat mug. Um, I have two sort of eight ounce ish cups thrown and trimmed that I was, those were what I was going to put handles with. But I feel like, I feel like this stays, this, this may stay a snake mug. It feels, feels sort of, but this is nice and thick and round and short and could have. Passion flower, I think passion flower, and then like a leaf and a vine, and then you could hold it without crushing the passion flower because it's a nice big shape to wrap your hand around. So, uh, so there, that's a possibility because I just have mugs just sitting around. Um, this one still needs a snake handle, which is what I'll be doing later today. The tall one, but I think this this short thick one is just because I can get both my hands there, and I'm just just the passion flowers like between them. So I think that yeah, I think the passion flower will go on this convenient already created mug that will just set right there, and this mug will put back. Sorry, we're just gonna reach under the camera to put it back under the plastic because they're all pretty hard already, and I don't want them to get much harder. So. So what is, is that hair that I've got in there? It is, ooh, so to fix that, pull that out, there we go. So let's see, where to, this side, this side seems good. Just get that ready. Because I want to get this is so thin this flower that I, I it's gonna start to dry pretty soon and I want it to be like where it belongs before that happens 
because I don't want to have to worry about its little petals cracking when I try and stick it on later. So, so we'll just get this. These bottom petals, I think, all go onto the mug. And then the top petals, I'll, I'll give some shape to. So. Okay. <laughs> juggling, juggling. And we want it turned so that it doesn't hang over the top because because we don't want these petals to break off. We want it to be pretty protected so that when people use the mug, they don't feel like they're gonna break the flower. <laughs> so, get, get some, some little lift from these top petals. Not too much, just a little bit of shape. Bottom petals are nice and stuck down. And there we go. Passion flower on the mug. So we'll just set that aside. Oh, by the way, this is, this is how it looks from the top. It's a little bit middle heavy, but what can you do? Um, I feel like I pushed a little hard when I squidge that down, I may need to tidy that up some later. But, but we have done the thing. Camera, please focus. Please, I beg of you, focus on the really nice flower that we've made. Instead of all, aha! Uh -huh. If I cover the more complicated background, it believes me. But the, nope, nope, focus. Focus on the... Aha! For a moment, anyway, we are getting a beautiful look at the mug. Just gonna hold this for a minute. Nope, it went away. Okay, anyway. <laughs> We've done that. We've added it. Good. Now. Now, back to snakes. First things first. It's, uh, it's good to, we'll take the lid off here. Actually, let's do the lid first. It's small and easy to handle. Take the rest of, of teapot over there. So, it's time for, uh, for the trick of, um, scale making here. Just use my nice wood tool and then gently just rub that down onto the clay until it sticks down and that kind of embedded in the clay some. Then when we pull it off you have a nice, delicate, again, can't see it because the camera won't focus. Oh, camera. Anyway, there's, there's scales there, um, I promise, that look like this. But, uh, But in clay, it's a really nice texture. It requires some delicate glazing um, to show up, so I can't use a very heavy, thick glaze that that covers over fine lines and details, which is one of the reasons I'm going to have to do some cleaning later. Um, I just, I so, I so want you guys. There we go scales, um, which is why I'm gonna have to do some cleaning later of the, uh, like these little, little nubbins and divots because they'll all show up through the glaze. 
because I need to use a glaze that will show details. So all of the flaws in my pottery making will also show through. And that's not ideal, but, but the, the snake details are what's truly important. And snake details involve scales. Scales, and then little cheek scales. And the other side. All right, now. Now, snake, snake head details. So there's like a line kind of down the middle and then goes up like that. And then back like that. So it's got some little head shape. They have that little, that little mouth that kind of goes up in the front in that little snake lip. Sorry, it's gone all silent because it's it's the fiddly bit. Just getting this little lip in there. There we go. Smooth that out. Then little snake mouth that goes to about, let's see, it goes back a ways, so maybe to about here. So, the other side, about here. Drawing on snake mouths. Yeah, there we go. And I'll clean these details up a little bit, sort of when he's getting more towards leather hard, I'll, I'll just tidy up sort of the bits of clay on the face and such. Let's see, I wanna have a little bit of a, a divot there. Just little details. Now, next secret. This very expensive, nice looking pen is actually the stamp for snake eyeballs. Snake eyeballs, the perfect snake eyeball stamp is this specific pen. I don't know if you can see, but the rim of the, the pen is quite thick. So unlike other pens, it just stamps a really good like double circle, which is the perfect snake eye. So now he's a, now he's a snake. Now he's, he's got a little snake face. And then the finishing snake face touch is that you take this little tiny tool 
and you do a little line and a little line and a little line so that he's got little little snake scale details. And snake lid. Just there we go, snake lid. Nope. Camera. Aha. Uh, oh. It's always great for like a second and then it loses it. Anyway. Um, enough about my camera annoyance. <laughs> Let's go back in here and and work on tidying up after ourselves now that we have some details in place. Just kind of make sure that that we've got a nice clean teapot. Erase the scales I accidentally may have pressed into the lid there. Just, you know, just generally cleaning up after ourselves. And uh, with brush and finger Just, there we go, snake lid, onwards, put him aside, and uh, take a sip of tea. Now, the rest of the pot. We shall start, I think, with uh, all the scales for all the snakes, that just seems reasonable. We'll, we'll s sort of start with, with big central snake because I want those scale imprints to be really strong because he's a larger shape with less coil so he's less interesting without it. So I want to really get them like clearly imprinted. And then I want to try and line them up-ish so there isn't a horrible break where I start the next row of scales. Okay, oops, squidged that snake. It's fine. Get some scales. Let's see, kind of line that up. Scale, scale, scales. We want a nice, exciting central snake. He is, after all, the most structural snake, the handle snake. Dare I say, the most important snake. An unfa oh, and then I nicked him with my fingernail. <laughs> uh, and I even cut them all super short too. Ah, uh, fingernails. Such an issue. Doing a little bit of last minute shaping. Get the snake scales on. And snake scales. Okay, now 
think we're gonna have to take the support away. Oh no! To get now, now there's a another thing that we have to do with this handle that we don't have to do with the other snakes, which is we have to give him belly scales. I mean, does that mean that all snake all no snakes have clothes, so all snakes must be snaked? Is that is that what's what we're getting at here? Okay. Time for the tricky part. Where I have to hold it in one hand and do this with the other. while also being on camera. <laughs> Seems fine. What could go wrong? I regret saying that out loud now because I know what could go wrong. <laughs> I, I actually, I actually know specifically what could go wrong, which is that I could be horrifyingly deforming this teapot right now because my hand is inside and it's being supported by one one side of the pot but I think it's dry enough that I won't I think I'm safe ish that's my hope anyway okay scales on that one that you still annoyingly ah oh, there we go you can pretty much see them so let's let's move on to scales on side side snake ah oh, sounds wrong somehow i don't this is my side snake my snake on the side not my main snake okay Oh, those are some good clear scales right there. Da, da, da. So So snake pot. I have a suspicion. I'm not sure if it's true, but I have a suspicion that some of the people that voted on the Twitter poll for a snake teapot just wanted to own a snake teapot <laughs> and voted for it for that reason. But I don't know, I could be wrong. It's, uh, it's possible they had other reasons. But, uh, But yeah, it was it was a firm majority, like a I think possibly one of the most one-sided polls I've ever done for a Friday tea time. The internet was like, oh, we could have snakes on a mug, then then that, obviously. There are no other options. All we care about is the snake mug. Snake pot, snake teapot. I keep saying mug when I mean teapot which made that whole statement very confusing, and I apologize. <laughs> um, oh, Hannah, was that your reason for voting? You just want to own a snake teapot? I mean, it's a valid reason to, to, to want something to be made. Uh, I feel like there's, there's really, really only two points to voting in a Friday tea time vote. One one point is that you want to force me to make something, and the other is that you want me that that you want to see a thing exist, possibly in your house. Um, 
flug. No one, no, one, I don't know. Flower mug flug. It, it's a little bit, a little bit of an unwieldy word for such a delicate, delicate object. I'm sorry that I've gone completely off camera. It's, uh, I think I need to adjust the angle of my light is what needs to happen. I think that's better for me. I don't know if it's better for you, but now that I'm getting no sunlight, I feel like I needed to... Oh, hey, I found some found some score marks we didn't tidy up oh no better do that now oh we're looking at them make sure that that's cleaner than it was where did I there it is I'm losing tools in my pile of tools after I gave that whole speech about how the nice glaze that will show all of the snake details will also show all of the flaws, I didn't sufficiently clean up my work. I have nothing but no one but myself to blame. Get that. That's. I'll start. I don't know why my voice went like that. <laughs> I don't know why I'm suddenly all gravelly. But it's fine. If nothing else, I'll revert to evil Mayor Lewis voice. And we'll just stream like this for the rest of the day. Okay. Right. Back to scales. We were doing a thing. Oh no. We were doing a thing and I got distracted. Let's get back to the thing. We were putting texture scales on snakes. It's kind of a a long and precarious process, but uh, but it will pay off in the end. Get some tail scales going on. Almost to the end. Almost all the scales. There we go. Put that over here. So, ah, I think we could use some slightly deeper scales here. Let's see if I can line that back up. And just, that's better. So, now we have snakes with scales. We have one snake with a face. It's time to give all the other snakes snake faces to do this chat. We are almost out of time. I'm going to go a little bit long since I started a little bit late. So I'm going to pull out something to sit on here, knock everything over, make a bunch of noise. Ah, that's better. Because I'm just not willing to work my... Uh, to work my quads to the point where I'm crouching in front of this mug for the next 15 minutes while I detail snake faces. So let's start, let's start with their little, their little head shapes. Do a little bit of that sort of back of the head scale
tidy that up. And back of the head here. Oh, chat. It's, I'm of that age. It's time to put on the reading glasses. Ah, better. Better, better. Got to be able to see all the, all the snake detail. Yes, get a little bit of scales there. And while I'm sitting here, do his little, his little lip. Ah, flower pieces in my way. Put those back in there. Oh, far away. Weird to look at things far away while wearing the reading glasses. <laughs> Too, oh, too far. His head is still pretty soft. Oh no, I can't read chat with these on at all. Okay, chat, I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to bear with me for, for a minute here. <laughs> while, I, while I deal with the magnification involved. Oh, you know what I forgot on lid snake? I forgot, I forgot that he needs little nostrils. Let's fix that right now so that he can breathe. Oh, there we go. Oh, what a relief. Maybe, maybe I can get the camera to focus. It's actually hard to tell wearing these glasses if the camera is focused or not. I think I've also accidentally spun my laptop. So, this is fun. Just spin you guys back. There we go. So yeah, now the snake can breathe. That's important. Get a little... Doing all the little snake lips. Oh, you're gonna be a problem. Little... Little friend in awkward position. It's fine. Oh no! No, 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 I stabbed him. I stabbed him with my tool. Well, I have to do some repair work. Give him, give him new scales to replace the ones I I obliterated. There. Everything's fine. Snake nostrils. Snostrils. Yes. Snake. Snake lip. Slip. Snake lip. It's, uh... Is it just we add sn to the end of words? Or the beginning of words? Oh, Lord. I'm losing it, chat. <laughs> First, I can't remember flower scientific terms. Now I can't remember the difference between a prefix and a suffix. What is the world coming to? Also, I'm having real trouble with this angle. Okay. Got all the little, let's just, let's give him eyeballs because that'll make me feel more like I know where everything is, is headed. That feels a little far back, actually. But it also has highlighted a problem with the shape of this dude's head, so we'll, we'll use that as a reason to, to touch it up. Okay. Yeah, he needs... Better. Better. There we go. 
So then maybe like here. That's a bit better. I think, I think, nope, that one's still too far back. Maybe not, maybe it's fine. It's fine or they're both too far back. Ah. <laughs> I had to take off my glasses to read, to read a, 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 a suffix, snuffix pun. So, I have regrets. P put the glasses back on. Let's see. More, more, more messiness going on. Okay. I think I need to stand back up. I think I need to stand back up because I think the snake mouths need better lighting at a better angle. Yes. Just, uh, mm. tidy it up a little bit. Is that, uh, it's not in focus, whatever. It's fine. It's fine, camera. Get some mouth detail in there. And nostrils. Because snakes need to breathe. Candle snake needs a little bit of mouth touch up here. We can tidy that up. That's a little bit better. Yes. Okay. Onwards to Spout Snake, which needs little snake eyeballs. And then a little snake mouth goes to about there. And then on the other side to about there. No, oh, I wobbled. Oh no. I'm losing it. Stabbed him with my fingernails. I wobbled on his mouth. It's just an awkward angle. We'll fix it later. <laughs> no, I've had I I had a decent night's sleep. I think I'm just uh I'm just distracted trying to to do tiny snake details. There we go. Almost, almost there. Just one more snake mouth. It goes to am I on camera at all? Is the camera focusing on anything I'm doing, by the way? <laughs> Glasses off. 
Snackalades, Snapologize. Oh no, Snogget. Oh, chat, 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 what has become of you? You've, you've become only puns. Ugh. Ugh. Totally messed that up. This is an awkward angle. Awkward snake angle. But, but it's trying. It's trying hard. I'm gonna... See if I can f fix it a little bit. But it, it's, it needs to start just... Nope. Nope, I'm only making it worse. Cool. I feel like I could have put some of these little face details on before. <laughs> Before I put it in a position that it was really hard to do, but then I probably would have squished them anyway. Can't win. Well, let's use a smaller tool. Bring out the sharp pointy needle tool. That's made a mess, but but it's a little bit better of a shape. Okay, we can touch that up. Later, who doesn't have nostrils? No one. These two guys need nostrils. Snakes can't breathe. Little snake nose. And... And then for you... Okay, good. We are basically, basically done. There'll be cleanup to do, obviously, but we have basically covered this teapot in snakes. I mean, really, really covered in snakes. Done a, a, a pretty thorough job. Of covering it in snakes. So there we are. Accomplished what we set out to do. I'm just gonna gently put that down. Um, I feel like the handle is good. I feel like it doesn't need support anymore, so I'm throwing that to the side. Mmm, <laughs> snake, snake throw, a, a snurrow. A snurrow enough job. Yeah, I don't, I'm, um, hmm. Well, I still have a lot of this clay left. I will have to throw more mugs. <laughs> Two, maybe, with this. Take it in half. Oh, no, wait, I have to make another snake handle. Never mind. One more mug. So, got snake covered teapot. Just, I wish the camera showed you how incredibly great it looks. I wish that it was in focus and you could see just all of the great detail. That the camera has there, look, some, oh, camera. Oh, the more I do this, the more I think the first 
goal level on Patreon is going to be a camera <laughs> that works. This was not an inexpensive camera. Anyway, that we've accomplished not only what we set out to accomplish, but we've made a passion flower mug. Like crazy people, we googled the most complicated flower in the world and put it on a mug. And now it needs some petals, oh, not some petals, some leaves, like a maybe a leaf on the other side, and then I'll I'll draw on um, I'll draw on some vines because I want you to be able to I don't maybe no leaves maybe just maybe I'll just draw on the vines and leaves because I want you to be able to hold it like this because this doesn't have a handle I could give it a handle I suppose then you could just hold it however you wanted that's also a possibility I could just give it a handle but I don't I hold all of my tea mugs like this basically even when they have handles so I might leave it handleless just add some more decoration. So it's uh, 617. Accomplished. I'm going to move some stuff around so that I can have what I've accomplished in the center of the screen. Accomplished. We set out to accomplish. Also, have covered my phone in clay. So that's fun. And uh, covered my phone in clay and covered a pot in snakes. And I think, I think that's where we'll leave it today at Friday Tea Time. Next week we will go back to digital art. I don't know what the topic will be. There will be another poll probably. Um, as always, you can send me messages with topic ideas and they might enter into a poll. Um, especially if I start to run out of things that I just want to draw that day. And until then, as always, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and support me on Ko-Fi. All the links are in the bottom of the Twitch thing. Also, remember that I put things up on YouTube so that when they disappear here, they're still archived on YouTube, and you can watch them there. I'll see you guys on Twitter, and next week at Friday Tea Time. I hope you had fun and enjoyed the snake teapot creation, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye!